Dear friends, today we are discussing about the theories in linguistics, dialect and deficit theory. The term dialect refers to a variety of language that is characteristics of a particular group of language speakers. It also refers to a language socially inferior to national language. Dialect includes variety within in a language with peculiar differences in the features of grammar, vocabulary and the pronunciation from the standard language. Although there is an old proverb that language is, a, is simply a dialect with its own army and navy. Linguistics argue that dialects should allow basic mutual comprehension. Accordingly, the dialect theory of communicating emotion argues that the language of emotion is universal. As with other languages, different cultures can express themselves in different dialects, which is the first proposition of dialect theory. The second proposition is that the, pre the presence of dialects has the potential to make the recognition of emotions less accurate across cultural boundaries. Again using the concepts imported from uh, linguistics to articulate the theoretical framework, even small changes in language can create confusion. A minimal pair consists of two forms with distinct meanings that differ by only one segment found in the sam same position in each form. Words in a minimal pair are easily confused with each other when, when um, enunciated differently, sometimes through very small shifts. For example, ship and sheep. Now you can watch a video, it tells you what is the meaning of the term dialect. The term dialect is used in two distinct ways to refer to two different types of linguistic phenomena. One usage, the more common among linguists, refers to a variety of a language that is a characteristic of a particular group of the language's speakers. The term is applied most often to regional speech patterns, but a dialect may also be defined by other factors, such as social class. A dialect that is associated with a particular social class can be termed a sociolect. A dialect that is associated with a particular ethnic group can be termed as ethnolect, and a regional dialect may be termed a regiolect. According to this definition, any variety of a language constitutes a dialect, including any standard varieties. The other usage refers to a language that is socially subordinated to a regional or national standard language often historically coniate or related to the standard language, but not actually derived from it. In this sense, unlike in the first usage, the standard language would not itself be considered a dialect, as it is the dominant language in a particular state or region, whether in terms of social or political status, official status, predominance or prevalence, or all of the above. Meanwhile, the dialects subordinate to the standard language are generally not variations on the standard language but rather separate but often related languages in and of themselves. For example, most of the various regional Romance languages of Italy, often colloquially referred to as Italian dialects, are, in fact, not actually derived from modern standard Italian, but rather evolved from vulgar Latin separately and individually from one another and independently of standard Italian, long prior to the diffusion of a national standardized language throughout what is now Italy. These various Latin-derived regional languages are therefore, in a linguistic sense, not truly dialects of the standard Italian language, but are instead better defined as their own separate languages. Conversely, with the spread of standard Italian throughout Italy in the 20th century, various regional versions or varieties of standard Italian developed, generally as a mix of the national standard Italian with local regional languages and local accents. These variations on standard Italian, known as regional Italian, would more appropriately be called dialects in accordance with the first linguistic definition of dialect as they are in fact derived partially or mostly from standard Italian. A dialect is distinguished by its vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation phonology, 
including prosody, where a distinction can be made only in terms of pronunciation, including prosody, or just prosody itself, the term accent may be preferred over dialect. Other types of speech varieties include jargons, which are characterized by differences in lexicon, vocabulary, slang, patas, pigeons, and argots. The particular speech patterns used by an individual are termed an I dialect. The deficit theory attempts to explain why certain disadvantaged, disadvantaged students show a high failure rate in school. These students coming from socio-economically disadvantaged advantaged homes show a lack of verbal stimulation and uh, entered school without the necessary linguistic resources for success. These children labeled verbally deficient may actually be highly competent language user. However, they do not find themselves in situation where they are able to demonstrate their specific language competencies. When a child is the presence of an authority figure of a different social class, he or she tends to be more introverted. An important consideration for those working with high school students is to realize that one language is not inherently superior to another. Such understanding will, uh, will enhance a student's desire to develop during their years of critical language growth. The deficit hypothesis, sometimes called deprivation hypothesis, draws a distinction between middle class and working class children's language. <laughs> Broughton uh, defined deprivation hypothesis as the sociolinguistic view that some children are linguistically handicapped because they belong to social groups which have a poor linguistic reporter. Similarly, Bernstein takes the deficit theory to be a set of proposition which attempt to account for educational failure by locating its origins solely in surface features of the child's family and local community. The former definition is confined to linguistic deficiency, whereas the latter ascribes educational failure in general to the background of the child. Bernstein simplis, uh, Bernstein's simplistic assumption that if a child is linguistically underprivileged, he is automatically educationally incompetent, oblivious of many cognitive variables coming to play, cannot go unchallenged. Then we can see Bernstein's uh, uh, theoretical framework. Burns, Basil Bernstein was a British sociologist known for his work in the sociology of education. He made a significant contribution to the study of communication with his sociolinguistic theory of language codes. Within the broader category of language codes are elaborated and restricted codes. The term code as defined by uh, Stephen Littlejohn uh, in his theories of human communication, uh, it refers to a set of organizing principles behind the language employed by a member of society or group. Little John suggests that Bernstein's theory shows how the language people use in everyday conversation both reflects and shapes the assumption of a certain social group. Furthermore, relationships established within the social group affect the way that group uh, that uh, the group uses the language and the type of speech that is used. Bernstein's code theory can work as well as the theoretical foundation of educational research, exploring complex teaching and learning phenomenon as not only have his view on the sociology of education been justified by succeeding events in the society, but his code theory can illuminate how the school can act as a strong independent force in shaping students identity and essentially their view of the world. Fundamentally, Bernstein's most recent development of his code theory examined the general principles underlying the transformation of knowledge into pedagogic communication. His theory, which was developed over a period of more than 30 years, took into account the actual relay of pedagogical communica pedagogic communication, not solely the ideology behind pedagogical messages and their institutional, organizational and philosophical base. In fact, he argued that ideology was constructed through the nature of the relay. Researchers all too often avoid using his theory as a theoretical uh, foundation to their project due to the uh, complexity of his work. 
yet for researchers exploring educational issues, his theory can work very well. He argued that schools are main place where students shape their own values and intuitive and practical views of the world. Bernstein proposed that education is the primary social classifier in society. Underlying his theory was his claim that he claimed that the school acts as a social classifier through what, what he terms the three common message system that all schools around the globe have in common curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. These three message systems work to make education an agency of socialization and allocation and through, the, through them difference is produced and reproduced. It is argued that by using his core theory as a theoretical framework of a project, one can provide a language description from which to make uh, explicit the ways in which knowledge is relayed through the curriculum. Assess, curriculum assessment and uh, curriculum assessment and pedagogy within educational organization. When we wind up the topic, we can conclude that in linguistics, dialects are the varieties of la language used by diverse speakers who are detached by geographical, uh, geographic or social margins. As with other language, uh, different cultures can convey themselves in different dialects, which is the first proposition of dialect theory. The second proposition is that the pro presence of uh, dialects has the potential to make the recognition of emotions less accurate across cultural boundaries. Linguist uh, deficit theory hold that certain linguistic varieties are inherently superior and that children who are raised in environments where such varieties are in lacking will acquire deficient mode of thought resulting in deficits uh, which